Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we're looking at freedom again. What freedom is really, really about. And let me bring that up on your screen there. Uh, freedom. And uh, let's put a three question marks there, right? Amen. And we just put freedom there. And let's just see. You know, our whole life is based upon we don't want to feel like we are in bondage to anything. Our whole life is based on we want to be free. And if you think about it, God has made us to be free. He's never made us to be in bondage to any individual. The only one we should be in bondage to, and it's not really bondage, but uh, is Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so as we talk about freedom this morning again, I want us to focus on something very, very important. And I believe that this broadcast will impart a different perspective when it comes to freedom. Before we go further, you know I always go into my Bible promises and we pray a scripture. And uh, let's go there to Matthew 6.14. It says, Jesus said, if you forgive men when they sin against you, Jesus said, if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And that's just a, you know, we can pray a very simple prayer and just say, Father, I thank you because of forgiveness. I have been reconciled back to you because of forgiveness that Jesus Christ, your son, provided when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. That, that forgiveness, the day I acknowledged it and received it, it truly made me a son of yours. And because of that, you gave me the right to become a son of the Most High God. And as your son this morning or daughter, I thank you that as I walk in forgiveness, that you as my Heavenly Father will also cause me to enjoy the freedom of forgiveness. Hallelujah. That is so, so powerful. Amen. All right. Now let's get into some things here this morning. And um, uh, let me start off by saying this that freedom is a choice. Let me bring that up on your screen there. Uh, choices. You know, freedom deals with choices. Whatever choice you make in life is going to influence what happens to you. Freedom is all based on choices. You can either choose to uh, be a uh, reckless. That's really the word I want to use. You can either choose to be reckless and make your own decisions outside of the parameters of the Word of God and have no real protection. Because it's only the, the Word of God that is a shield uh, that uh, protects us. It's only the Word of God that can hold us together. After all, we were made through the Word of God. We were made through the Word of God. That is right. And so when we talk about freedom, it is a freedom in your soul that there's no soulish ties between you and anyone. Sometimes there can be uh, a passion towards somebody outside of your boundaries 
and you develop a soul tie with them and your soul becomes consumed and before you know there are uh, images that may form in your mind and I'm referring here to immoral images of lustful things and the whole world all our children they grow up with images in this modern world you click on your uh, computer and before you know there's an uh, immoral image and uh, some people get sucked into that and uh, then their soul develops soul ties with that image and your uh, your soul becomes uh, afflicted with something that you don't want to think about but those images are there and there's only one way to get rid of it and that is to ask God's spirit to cleanse your mind by the power of the blood of Jesus the Holy Spirit moves with the blood of Jesus then you need to make a decision and a decision not to go back and watch anything that is immoral and that will put you in bondage in your soul and cause conflict uh, of your emotions. And when you're in bondage to pornography, when you're in bondage to immoral images in your mind, uh, there is no real freedom. And, you know, we need at least somebody, a preacher needs to get up and talk about these things because they are real. They are very real. Soulish ties are very real. You can have a soulish tie with somebody that you have conflict with. And because you're not forgiving that individual, that other person controls and has power over your soul in those arenas of your thought patterns. And that's vital that you do not give control to nobody except to the Lord Jesus Christ and to God's divine word in you. Now, today we're going to look at uh, having to make certain choices. And let me just bring this image up on the screen. Uh, as you can see, this particular image in Galatians 5, 1, it says, it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. It was for freedom. And then there's a, a, a chain. God wants to break every chain of injustice that wants to try and control your life. Now, Jesus puts it very clearly in Luke chapter 4, and I'm just turning there, in Luke chapter 4, verse 17, do you know that Jesus read the Bible? Do you uh, realize that Jesus read the Bible? It says there in verse 17, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, that's the Bible, the scroll, he found the place where it is written, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. But watch now, watch now. He has sent me to heal the broken in heart. Watch now. Here it comes. See that picture on my uh, side there, that picture there? Uh, to uh, proclaim liberty to the captives. There it starts. Now watch now and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. In other words, he came to proclaim freedom to the captives. Sometimes there are people, uh, when you look at that picture here on my side, there are people that are in bondage. They are in bondage in their emotions or their thought patterns, and they are chained. And God is saying today that it is through the anointing. It is through uh, the Spirit of the Lord that those bondages can be broken off your, your mind. And you do not have to be chained in the arena of your mind 
to have soul ties even with your past, uh, issues that took place, harassed you, and uh, had a bad upbringing perhaps. And, and so there are things that can control your mind. And he says there, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for it has anointed me to heal the broken in heart, to proclaim freedom to the captives. Sometimes we can be a captive uh, to our own thought patterns, and because we rehearse those thought patterns of disappointment, it actually puts us in bondage, and you do not feel free in the mind. Isn't it wonderful? when you can just sit there on that beach and uh, you just watch, for instance, let me maybe bring up a picture there of the beach. Uh, let me just see if I can do that. Um, let me just see. Yeah, there it is. Um, you can see the water behind me and uh, there's some waves and what have you. It just brings a calmness. It just brings an absolute calmness over you. And what a wonderful, wonderful uh, picture to have when you watch the beach. There's just a great atmosphere of relaxation. And that's how our minds should be. Now, Jesus is saying, and I will uh, proclaim recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That means the year of jubilee, the cancellation of the former to usher in the latter. God's Spirit wants to manifest the year of jubilee in your life. That means he wipes the slate so clean that he can take your thoughts and readjust them and uh, allow you to see things from a perspective of peace, peace. All right, so that's the picture on, the, uh, on my screen there. It's on my left. I don't know which side it's on your screen. Uh, so at Calvary, at the cross, every chain of injustice has been broken off your life. I want you to know God doesn't want you to be chained to nothing, uh, not even unforgiveness. When you hold something against somebody, you've given them power over your life. When you hold an offense against somebody, you've given them power to control your soul. That's right, uh, to whatever extent that you rehearse those thoughts. Now, today, what I want to do is really get into 2 Corinthians chapter 3. But before I get into it, I want you to see that picture here. Uh, it is by grace that we have been saved through faith. And that is not of ourself. That's not of works that we do. You see the change there again? Uh, and that is to be free from the freedom, uh, f free from uh, the bondages of guilt. You know, guilt says that I cannot forgive myself. Guilt says I will uh, entertain that uh, a disappointment in my life and I just cannot get over it. And then you begin to run yourself down in your thought patterns and you see yourself eventually through the guilt of disappointment and therefore you begin to act up or act it out. The freedom from shame, see there on that picture? And the, the freedom from anything that wants to administer a poor self-image to you. The way you see yourself is the way that your circumstances will see you. And let me just say this at this particular point, and then, then we will slip over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, freedom is only in the spirit. There is no other freedom except in the Spirit. Now, let's slip over, all right, to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And it, it, it might just be a little bit very spiritual, but uh, uh, we've got to get into the spiritual things of God. Amen. So here we go, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 
And I pray that you will grasp what I'm going to say to you. Second Corinthians 3, let me bring it up on your screen as well and move these things around here. And then I'm just going to uh, write there Second uh, Corinthians chapter 3. Okay, for those who will be watching. All right, there we go. Make that a little bit bigger. And uh, we put there Second Corinthians 3. Why don't we do this? Put freedom at the top and put that over there. Or oh, we're really moving things around here, hey? <laughs> okay, there we go. Second Corinthians chapter 3. That really explains so much about where we are at and where you might be at in your particular life. Okay. And Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us. You are an epistle. You are a letter written. Understand that. When you move around, you become a letter, and people are going to read what is written by the way that you conduct your life. And it says there, uh, written not with ink. That means you're not a letter written by the fleshly works, by ink, but you're written by this letter, uh, by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone. That means not having a stony attitude, a hard attitude. Your attitude has got to be moisturized with the love of Christ Jesus. Your attitude needs to be moisturized by the very uh, humility of Christ that you are not want to exalt yourself above others with your opinion, whether they believe in you, they don't believe in what you say, will you speak the truth, that is between God and them. You don't have to help God to enforce your belief system on anybody. That will put you in bondage to people. Now, it says you are letter written by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart, the heart. Now watch now, verse 6. We're going to get a little bit deeper spiritual. Who also made us sufficient, you and I, we were made sufficient as ministers of a new covenant. You are a minister of a new covenant. And that new covenant is in Christ Jesus. That new covenant is in the blood of Jesus Christ. That new covenant is in based on uh, and built on better promises more freedom watch this you see not uh, it says there who are made as sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter that means you are not of the letter of the flesh of legalism you are a epistle a spiritual letter that moves around people will read what is written in your heart by the content that comes out of your mouth and by your character uh, 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 body language, yes? And remember your character. Your character is what will determine the size of the anointing upon your life and the size of your assignment. Small character, small anointing, small character, small vision, small assignment. And the bigger the character of being more Christ-like, putting God things into practice, and your character becomes more Christ-like, like with humility, making yourself of no reputation. Uh, you know, uh, those that betray you, you will just pray for them, and you will not... Uh, develop an offense against them, yes, and those who don't believe you, uh, that's okay, and they disagree with you, you will just let it go and let God and not develop strife uh, with anybody. The character of Christ 
is to consider others above yourself. God bless you, Robert. God bless you. And uh, so it is vital. 2 Corinthians 3, I'm going to get to something and then we will begin to close. It says there that you are a letter written by the Spirit of the uh, Lord. Uh, uh, okay, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, freedom is to enjoy life and life more abundantly. But the moment that we focus on legalism, like legalism says, you, you begin to just keep focusing on the problems or the mistakes of people. That's when you are going to develop um, conflict between you and others. And you will push people away. Because the flesh wants to condemn people. And if we focus on their fleshly mistakes, we are actually activating condemnation that is embedded in the flesh and condemnation will strip them of their self-worth they will not see themselves of being able to be saved to be delivered they will see themselves as not good enough and so you're not a letter written by ink you are written by the spirit now when you're led by the holy spirit you look at people through the heart of the Father and not through the fleshly eyes of finding mistakes. All right. Verse 7. Are you ready? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 7. But if the spirit of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadily look at the face of Moses because of the glory, say glory, because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. Watch now. He says, there was this glorious ministry, and Moses' face was shining with the glory of God. It comes out of the presence of God. And the Israelites could not look upon the glory of God. They could not enjoy the glory of God. Why? Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, the Israelites could not enjoy the glory of God. Why? Because they were letters written by ink. Uh, that means a letter of the flesh. They uh, were full of uh, guilt and condemnation, fault finding, murmuring, complaining, and blah, 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 all that negative stuff. Uh, they could not look in, uh, into the glory that came, that was upon Moses' face. And so Moses had to put a veil over his face, yes, and to cover the Israelites, uh, basically preventing them to see this glory. Now watch this. This is quite a spiritual uh, chapter, but you know, we need to also get into some spiritual things, more so, not that we aren't, but we, we need to launch out into the deep. Now, it says, that glory on the countenance passed away. Verse 8, 2 Corinthians 3, 8. Now will the ministry, oh, hang on, how, 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 how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is far more glorious than the ministry of the law that was written on tablets of stone, which developed a stony heart of legalism, pointing out people's mistakes. Now watch this. Are you ready? Uh, for if the ministry of condemnation, there's the word, verse 9, 2 Corinthians 3, 9, for if the ministry of condemnation had glory, that's under the old covenant. The law was one of condemnation. If you commit adultery, you stone to death. In the New Testament, you look at a woman lustfully, then you've already committed adultery. In that way, you can, you know, you will become convicted and uh, repent before you actually go into the action or the, the very, uh, uh, you know, before you commit uh, a physical act of adultery, 
God has put a preventative measure there now that your mind, your soul, your conscience will convict you. He will cause you to feel uneasy. And uh, those are the signals that God is trying to get through to you so that you do not put yourself in bondage to anyone as that you should not have a immoral relationship with. Now, 2 Corinthians 3, 9, For if the spirit of condemnation and glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more, hallelujah, in glory. Yes. Now, we're going to close with this. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. I want to encourage you today before I close the program. And that is, that when you tap into the Holy Spirit, you're tapping into the latter glory, which is far greater than the former glory. The former glory came under the law, and it was under condemnation. The people was completely controlled by uh, the sinful actions of their flesh. Their consciences could never be cleansed. But it was still a glory of the Lord that came through Moses. But it was a ministry of death and not life. And if you move under the ministry of, uh, of death, you know, it, uh, that's a ministry of death. Uh, I was just looking where is the verse, Second Corinthians 3, 7. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones, that's the law, was glorious. So the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses, right? Because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. That glory has been passed away. So if somebody moves back under the law of a previous glory, which is a ministry of death, when you move under legalism and you only fault conscious and only mistake conscious, only want to point at what you can find fault. You can even get people, they will visit churches. They're looking for a perfect church because the last one disappointed them. If you're looking for a perfect church, please do not join it. You will ruin it. There is no perfect church until the return of our Lord Jesus Christ when imperfection will disappear. You know, when people come in and they say, I'm just looking for this kind of church and that kind of church, and, and they start talking about issues that they have before with another church. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, when you run down a previous uh, uh, ministry, you're going to do basically that same thing in another ministry. So you've got to be cautious that you do not speak out against God's anointed. If you're not satisfied in a church, uh, then move on. Ask God, where, uh, ask God where you can go. Let me take a sip of my tea. Uh, sometimes my mouth just becomes a bit dry. And uh, ask the Lord. If there's a ministry that you cannot settle in and you don't feel comfortable and you just aggravate it, or you don't get the stuff that you need to grow spiritually, uh, rather just end in your resignation, or end your, you know, your connection there by telling the pastor you moving on, and that uh, you would like to be released, and then when you join another church, do not run that church down where you came from. Yes. All right, verse 9, for the ministry of condemnation and glory. So when you move under a fault-finding uh, uh, mentality, it's a ministry of condemnation. And yet it had glory in the Old Testament. But now that is called the ministry of death. Can you imagine when you meet up with people, you hand them your little business, spiritual card, and it says, join our ministry of death. Join our ministry of death. No, 
we did not receive a ministry of death. It's a choice. If you put yourself under a ministry of death in your own context and in your own understanding that that's the way you're going to look at life. Life is full of mistakes. Life is bad. Life is life. Da, 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 da. Listen, Jesus came into an imperfect world and he made a difference. God has called you to make a difference in this world. God has called you to make a difference. And if you uh, do not choose to make a difference and you want to flow with the negativity that is in the world right now on media, and I mean, it's all over. We are in the last days. The Bible says in the last days there will be lawlessness. And you think about the lawlessness that you observe. Having said that, verse 11, For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Hallelujah. And I want to just get into this verse 14. But their minds were blinded. For until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. Now, I'm going to just tell you something and this might be quite provoking this might be quite provoking okay do not get stuck in the old testament we learn from the old testament but the old testament should not govern you it's the new testament that should govern your spiritual walk now i did not write the bible now keep listening in uh, 2 Corinthians 3.14, I'm going to read that again. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. There's a, there, there's a contrast between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament, the law under Moses, and the New Testament, the fulfillment of the law, uh, being one with Christ. If you lift just out of the Old Testament, you're going to fall in a trap of uh, legalism. One day I got a call from this person, and this person was so judgmental and so ugly on the phone many, many years ago. And I, and the Holy Spirit said to me, and I was still on the bluff in Durban, and the Holy Spirit says, Ask the person in what book in the Bible are they busy studying. And they said, Jeremiah. So I knew exactly. Jeremiah was a very judge, uh, was judgment motivated. Everything was to do with judgment. If you, and that the judgment of the old has been taken away because I can quote you like Daniel chapter 7, around about verse 22. It says, judgment is now in favor of the saints of God. Hallelujah. What judgment? The judgment that Jesus uh, suffered at Calvary, at Calvary on that cross on behalf of you and me. He took our judgment. Therefore, there is no uh, judgment in uh, for those that are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. That's Romans 8.1. We've got to get a little bit more into the spiritual aspects here because uh, freedom is in the spirit, not in the flesh. There is no freedom in the flesh. If you think that you've got freedom in the flesh, you're making a big, big mistake. Freedom is in the spirit, in the inward, to the extent that the inward is liberated, to that extent on the outward, your countenance change. There's glory written all over you. Hallelujah. You are pleasant and peaceful and you want to get on with people. And just because somebody maybe in your eyes, let's say you've been set free of smoking. Now you're not going to condemn the person who smokes because you, by grace, through faith, you've been set free. Look at that. It's by grace that the change of injustices are broken off our lives by grace, by grace. We need to get into the realm of grace towards people. 
bear with the failings of the weak, the Bible says. Just because we have been set free, just because we have been set free of things, we cannot pass that conviction and deliverance we have experienced upon other people and expect them to behave exactly like us. It may have taken you and I years and years to get to the point where we are right now. You cannot expect other people who's, who maybe is in the Lord a year, two years, or maybe baby Christians. You cannot expect the same thing. Exactly. Thank you for that. Amen. Now, but even to this day, verse 15, when Moses is read, a veil lies on the heart. Nevertheless, uh, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. There's our verse for today. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Amen? Remember, you and I are being transformed into uh, the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen and amen. I know that was we went rather quite deep spiritually, but you have to understand, if I can just summarize here, and I'll let you go. Um, there's this understanding that if you just live out of the Old Testament, you're placing yourself back under the uh, uh, ministry of death, which was under the law, and there was a glory that faded on Moses' face. It's a fading glory. Second Corinthians 3 refers to that as a ministry of death. You do something wrong, you get stoned to death. You prophesy uh, wrong, you're going to be stoned to death. It was an eye for an eye. You see, it was a ministry of death. In the New Testament, it's a ministry of life in Christ Jesus. And when you tap into the ministry of a life which is by the Holy Spirit, anybody who tries to function outside uh, or, or tries to function through the absence of a Holy Spirit uh, relationship will be functioning out of legalism and forever they will be preaching about sin and about the shortcomings of the flesh. Listen, when you preach about the flesh, you stir up the flesh and you stir up rebellion. Preach about the new man in Christ. Preach about the new things that has come. Preach about the, that you are a new creature. Preach about you seated in Christ Jesus. Preach about how you're walking and, uh, in the ministry of reconciliation. Preach about the good things of the new covenant. That's where the glory of God is. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you tomorrow. And we will conclude our series. And I thought we we're going to get to uh, some of the questions, you know, that I've written down here on my paper, but uh, we didn't. However, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we have to get into some real spiritual meat as well. Remember, you do not have a ministry of death. You have a ministry of life if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and to fill you, then you have a ministry of life and not of death. God bless you. Until next time, remember Jesus is Lord. Bye now. Thank you for tuning in.